All right, everyone, if you've ever read or watched 1984, you know that one element of propaganda, and this work gets it right, definitely, is language control. Language control is perhaps the most important aspect other than physical force itself in controlling people. In fact, if you have enough propaganda, if you're given enough psychological leeway and you have enough of a corporate apparatus to deliver it and get around the First and Fourth Amendments, which is what Silicon Valley is for, it appears, uh, then you don't need to use physical force. Not necessary to round people up in camps. It's not necessary to force them out in, in the middle of the night and, you know, beat their daughters at gunpoint. It's not necessary to uh, physically harass and intimidate them. All you have to do is have a, a, situ a system that's created that is more or less monolithic. It's monopolized. It's government co-opted, controlled by a bunch of CEOs and bankers who have nothing in common with the general population. You simply control people by figuring out what language will or will not be used or accepted uh, on these platforms that have been integrated together into a gigantic corporate monopoly. That's what we see with the internet today. We have a trust involving a few dozen extremely large companies. They work with the U.S. government. This is why what they're doing is technically illegal already. Uh, because it is, uh, you can't work around the First Amendment by privatizing abuse. You can't say, well, I c the government can't say, I can't prevent you from speaking, but I can command all these corporations to not sell you the paper to use on your printer. Uh, that would be illegal. It would be explicitly illegal. As long as they do it through middlemen, nobody so far has noticed. But I'm going to give a suggestion to the creator community to alt tech, to the online world, to political dissidents, you know, people and a handful of people in our government that are still awake. There's one important thing you can do to break this sort of psychological conditioning because it relies upon controlling language. So they'll use the term quality filter. Well, it's not a quality filter, it's a censorship tool. You're only calling it that. It's so opaque the way that it's designed. We don't even know what it's filtering or how. Well, then how can you possibly say that, oh, just trust us, it's for quality assurance within conversation. No, it's not. It's suppressing people that have certain views, that have certain beliefs. That's all it is. Family friendly. No, it's not family friendly. It's sanitized and injected with propaganda. It's not fact checking. It's fact skewing. See how easy that is? You've got to look at the language or the terminology used when they make up new terms, literally new speak. You should always pick them apart and think really critically about whether it actually properly represents what's going on. Number one, expose that fact to people. Deride and mock these situations, these systems that are being made by Silicon Valley, the quality filters the, and stuff. Just call them what they are, censorship, and deride them as such. And don't get bogged down in the free market debate. That's, that's bullshit. It's not a free market. Everyone knows that at this point. Number two, use the term moral panic. I see more and more people starting to use legacy media. I've, I need to talk about moral panic apparently ten times more often. If the term enters the public discourse at a high enough level, seeps its way into public consciousness as things like legacy media, corporatism, terms like that are, we can very quickly collapse the entire uh, censorship paradigm. Because then people will have a new term to substitute for, what, for the new speak that's already being used. See, the thing is, this is counter-propaganda. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why this isn't technically like libertarian newspeak or something, which some people, if they're jackboot lickers, they'd probably claim that. Because this term already entered the public lexicon a long time ago. It's already been around, but there's never been, as far as I know, before the fairly modern era, the, the term quality filter. What's, what's a real quality filter? A real quality filter is you slap it into your wall to filter the incoming AC air uh, so you don't get Legionnaire's disease or something. That's a quality filter. Family friendly. No, family friendly is sitting around fucking playing checkers or watching the Waltons or something. You're not going to get family friendly on a free and open internet because people aren't constantly facing uh, obstacles to uh, absorbing whatever content they want. It'd be draconian. It'd be tyrannical. It's censorship. That's all it is. Oh, build your own website, they say. You can't. It's become impossible. That's the whole point. Good luck finding someone to uh, act as a registrar. Good luck payment processing. Good luck using anything that was built by any other site on your site. Good luck finding a host. Good luck at this point without net neutrality. Hell, good luck finding an ISP to serve you at some point. They'll eventually join the fray because they've become now a target for the craptivists. That's another thing. We can make up our own new speak, technically speaking, for more benevolent reasons. Use the term craptivist. 
to denote somebody who, who claims to be activistic, but they're really just a bored moralist soccer mom. That's a mockery is one big way in which you defeat authoritarianism. Look, censorship and authoritarianism stem from fear. A group is losing power or fears losing power or money or, or something or audience. And so they lash out. It's sort of like what a religion does when it goes into decline. It declares some pogrom, starts a crusade. Oh, people are becoming decadent. Oh no, the tithing level has decreased. We must kill anyone who disagrees with us. States do this. A state that is under pressure spawns authoritarianism far more readily. We saw this with Weimar Germany. We're seeing it all over Europe today. It's coming from the left and the right. Groups are becoming uh, uh, more given over towards political intimidation tactics. Not necessarily authoritarianism as directed to a populace. Uh, sometimes it's more in the realm of intimidation. Like they're, they're literally more willing to throw a punch. You know, on the floor of some, some congress or some parliament, all of a sudden they break out into what amounts to a white-collar riot. And it's all very funny because, you know, they're throwing co their, their $10 cup coffee at each other and, and grabbing each other's $1,000 suits and ripping them and stuff like that. And it can be a little bit funny. It's like in, in, you know, in the Balkan states when occasionally someone throws a gas grenade into the parliament or something. It's just an, a normal activity there once in a while. Or when they lose a soccer uh, match. Then it happens even more. Then, then the cars start flipping and buildings start burning, honestly. But no, linguistics are how you understand reality. You've got to understand the concept of picking apart language. Develop this skill. It's not that difficult. It's just look at terms, especially when you hear a term for the first time, it sort of fires off the, the dopamine in your brain a little bit. Take a step back and look at what it's actually saying. What does quality filter in the sense of a multi-billion dollar corporate entity imposing it on political speech, what does it actually mean? There's a simpler way of saying it. It's an old term. It's been around for a long time. Censorship or corporate censorship, if you will, because it involves a multi-billion dollar entity. If it involves like Google, the, the concept that corporations can be moral actors, I reject completely. It's impossible. If they exist within a competitive framework, they will naturally seek to use those, those tools they're developing. That they're presenting to you as though they're for your fa to keep your children safe or to protect you from harmful opinions, which, you know, literally means anything that's non-corporatistic, non-neoliberal in form. Uh, they will inevitably aim them at smaller competitors. We see that right now. What are they doing to the all tech sites? Oh, we're kicking you off your payment processor. Because you're not doing what Google does and, and policing and micro-policing everything that goes on on your site. Oh, you allow people to say things that we find offensive? You can't take money. We're kicking you off of your host. Your registrar will drop you. The ISP won't serve you. Other sites won't allow you to use their widgets or whatever the fuck they use now. Essentially, you're depersoned. Well, you know, that sounds anti-competitive to me. It's funny. You'd have to build your own internet in order to have uh, actual free speech going on, I suppose, to some extent. I think that that's quite chilling. I think it's absolutely ludicrous that we're allowing U.S. firms to get away with this. If you want to be authoritarians, why don't you relocate uh, all of your headquarters and stuff to uh, Malawi or, or, you know, China or something? You'd fit in more in China. You, you have an ethos that is not markedly different from what China is doing on its intranet. It monitors everything. It removes and, and censors and deplatforms at a whim. It can prevent you from engaging in commerce because it can say, well, this person's a dissident. We better alert the authorities. They shouldn't be banking. They shouldn't be able to get a loan or, or a house or something. It's the same thing. We're under a form of censorship right now under these U.S. tech firms that to a more limited extent is essentially an extension of China. That's what it is. It's not any different. It's just censorship. It's not a quality filter. The Chinese use news speak like that too. Oh, this is the protection filter. This is the great internet wall that'll keep you safe from the evil outside world. This is the, this is the hall monitor that's going to keep your kids safe from bad opinions like believing in labor unions or something or thinking that they should get more than 10 cents an hour and work from the time that they're 10, 11 years old. That's what in the nation of communist China they would tell you. Aren't they telling you basically the same thing here? Only with, without the suicide nets because they pay their staff, you know, six-figure incomes? Not that big a different model now, when you really think about it. That's about all. Peace out.